glands are the various glands across the body which release their secretion directly into the blood and therefore as we know they are called as ductless glands and these release the chemical messages and these chemical messages are called nothing but hormones so we often hear the term hormonal imbalance and that is where we have endocrine glands which play an important role how do they act and what is a feedback mechanism is something that we would discuss to begin with let's understand the various endocrine glands we would understand those from the upper body towards the lower body starting from the brain there are three important uh, endocrine glands that we would understand and first less commonly heard is pineal gland and it releases melatonin so melatonin is a major secretion from pineal gland we would talk about each of these glands individually in detail uh, just an introduction here the next is hypothalamus and pituitary both of those are located at the base of the brain as you can see in the picture here and uh, they are in the diencephalon region so hypothalamus is responsible for vasopressin dopamine somatostatin as some of the major secretions however pituitary has is divided into anterior posterior and intermediate lo uh, lobe and we have various growth hormones which are secreted by the pituitary gland so pituitary is another important gland so from the brain area we have three important glands moving on to the neck area in the neck area two important glands the first important gland is the thyroid gland and on the thyroid gland towards the uh, the shape of the thyroid that that you can see here there are two lobes which are connected by a isthmus and these are four green ones are the parathyroid these parathyroid are important because they basically have an important role to play and thyroid as we know t3 t4 the common test which are done in your blood samples as well and thyroid is responsible for two important secretions one is thyroxin and the other is calcitonin so two important secretions by the thyroid gland thyroid gland as we said is present in the neck region or in the region uh, on the either side of the trachea or the windpipe the next important gland that we understand is in the uh, stomach region so so from the liver we have uh, igf as the major secretion then we have uh, the region of adrenal glands adrenal glands are two small cap like features on either kidneys and these have the adrenal cortex and medulla that uh, that again we would understand in detail the important secretions are glucocorticoids then we have mineralocorticoids androgens and adrenaline or non adrenaline so those are some of the major secretions from the adrenal gland then we have the next as pancreas pancreas is a leaf like structure which is present and insulin glucagon and somatostatin are some of the major secretions now pancreas we have the alpha beta and the delta cells that are there coming on next is in the females there is ovary and from the ovary we have estrogen and progesterone as major secretions in the males there is testes and the major secretions are uh, androgens and inhibin so those are some of the major uh, secretions from each of the gland now these secretions come up as hormones which are chemical messengers so as mentioned they are from the endocrine glands and therefore they are secreted by the uh, glands which empty directly into the blood and therefore are secreted by ductless glands they have a capability to run in the blood stream but affect only the target organ they are required in very small amount very meager quality uh, quantity and the reason is since they are emptying directly into the blood stream even a small amount is sufficient to act soon after their action is completed they are destroyed which is a very very important function to note as soon as their action gets over they are destroyed if the amount of secretion is a little less there can be diseases which can be due to hyposecretion 
If the amount is little more, there can be diseases which can be due to hypersecretions. So there are disorders which are due to hypersecretions, which is more secretion, or hyposecretion, which is less secretion. As uh, as we mentioned, they are organ specific. They act only on targeted organs. And these hormones can either be proteins, polypeptides, new amino acids or steroids in nature. So there can be various different ways in which each cell uh, affects another cell. So simply put, each target cell has a receptor. And their main idea is to maintain homeostasis, maintain and restore the balance. So as soon as a body feels deficient in something, the amount in which the hormones are secreted increases. And that's a normal mass, um, method to bring them into a routine cycle. And this is what is known as a feedback mechanism. They regulate all the physiological process, but how? by the chemical method so as we said in endocrine glands understanding the element of chemicals is very very important so hormones basically binds and they trigger certain cellular activity this term hormone was first discovered by uh, Bayless and Starling in 1902 and as mentioned they affect only target organs but they circulate throughout the body. So receptors are, for example, if they are proteins of a specific shape, then they complement to a particular hormone. If they are steroids of a specific aspect, they complement to that specific element. So as we can see here, we have first of all the hormones that run into the bloodstream. They are the chemical messengers. They are running into the bloodstream. So this hormone enters from the endocrine gland directly into the bloodstream and therefore these endocrine glands are called as secreting glands as well they keep moving into the blood vessel unless and until they find a target organ as soon as they find a receptor they bind to the receptor so we have the target cell and you can see the endocrine glands the hormones start to bind here and these target cells are the receptors and uh, once they enter the correct receptor, they would have the binding. If they do not enter the correct receptor, they won't have the correct binding and they won't affect that organ. So they would affect only the organ where they have a correct binding.